Hey guys, Dark Prometheus here, and welcome to our first updated video for our tutorial series going over the strategic map. Uh, I did one prior. This is using the latest 0.9113 patch that was released on July 25th. So it had a lot of the new symbols and stuff like that. And this is just going to be going over what you see in front of you. Pretty much the strategic map and what you're going to see when you first come into a game. I've loaded up my 1862 campaign that we just finished uh, about a week ago or so. And I got a good mix of what I can show you on the map. Uh, particularly because it is February. So obviously you have your dates. Uh, you have your dispatch log, so all your events, essentially. So results of battles, if you have any bonds issued, uh, any aftermath of battles, uh, if you have any disintegrating units, if you lost the battle, so on and so forth. Also, you'll see the monthly economic report. It looks like this. Kind of tells you what's going on, how many companies were founded, yeah, a lot of this stuff is automated, so uh, actually background stuff. And then, uh, obviously, your units getting to places. Like in this particular instance, uh, Buckner, I believe you got down to the south down here. So date, this is how many men you have fielded. So this will tell you in the tooltip how many reported sick and wounded. So those are... Uh, reported here so disabled and that number in this new tooltip that reported sick and wounded is the total amount of disabled in your entire force so that's out of everything you had deployed it'll give you the change the manpower in the last three months uh, it kind of mimicked reporting so obviously it takes some time during this uh, period to get reports where they need to be. Uh, you have due to casualties, due to attrition, which would be out of supply, things like that. How many return to service, so both uh, how many people were able to go from disabled to able-bodied, which is your uh, men numbered here. This is able-bodied uh, men from roll call, essentially. How many volunteers are available? And the increase. So we had 14K volunteers available uh, over the past three months. So that's good there. How many recruits were, or how many were used for reinforcement? So we got a bunch of volunteers. We had 58K available with a surplus of 14, but we used 51K in reinforcements uh, over the last three months so we're slowly getting stuff there and we don't have drafts in this campaign uh, so we don't have to worry about that tells you your military pos policy so contract expiring how much you will lose in three months from those contracts and estimated reenlistment ratio so what happens with reenlistment I'll go over it because it'll be more in the military section and kind of mixed with some policy is the fact that you have those 24,000 men within three months that will expire. It does not mean your units will disappear. What that means is then with that, you will have a 40% rate of that 24,000 will remain in those units and you will have to reinforce them over time. So what that means in that tooltip is say you have Braxton Bragg and you have uh, actually Beauregard and you have all of his divisions here and say it was all of these okay in three months all of these expire of uh, this entire division and let's say you have a 40 percent reenlistment rate to that portion there 40 percent of those 11,000 men that expire let's say the entire division expires at the same time will stay here so you'll have these four units will still exist but they will take a manpower hit of 60 percent from there so that's something to plan with uh, 
you'll see the AI kind of struggle with that sometimes. But I think it's something they're eventually working on. So that's with the tooltips there. And uh, that's in states with high support. So you can actually get that up by getting your state support up. You can get your reenlistment ratio up. You lose less men. So current treasury and surplus. The annual budget, uh, annual treasury balance. And... The actually this is the budget it's backwards so this is the current budget that I have here out of here as you see 182 it's kind of ticking and this is what we have currently in the treasury so this is how much I have yeah, so treasury, budget, which is your overall net budget. It's your surplus, I think it is. Let's see, total expenses. Yeah, that's about what that is. So this both contains, here is your actual loaned as well so it's a little confusing at first when you look at this but this is your debt essentially and that number comes from all of these you have your expenses your revenues and you end up with that like that debt so it's a little kind of behind everything uh, but the main thing you want to worry about is your credit rating uh, based on your credit rating, that will be if you can still recruit. So if you have a too low credit rating, you'll see it there and you won't be able to actually recruit or anything like that or construct ships. So that's important to think about, uh, particularly when we go into the policy tutorial that I'll kind of go through. Uh, how many sea transports? So if you send your men on rivers or seas, that's how many you have there. You can actually crank that up via a policy. Uh, and that is transportation. So you can increase that. Same thing with river. So if you're on rivers, it uses this pool. If you're out in the ocean, it uses this pool. And then for your railroads, if you have railroads all around, it uses this pool here. When you take industrialization as the union, uh, that pool is a lot bigger. I think all three of them are because you have industrialization and you can move around. So as a confederacy, it kind of slows you down your movement, but you're not trying to move a lot of troops at the same time generally. So you'll have your warnings here, and there's a couple that I don't have on, but I can show on the map. So if you're out of supply, because it is February and we have most of our units in supply, you'll have a little indicator up here as well that'll tell you what units are not in supply and it'll tell you by the name of the unit like second core uh, and it'll tell you the commander second core uh, brag and you click on it and it'll take you to that core and it'll kind of show you all that we'll go dive deeper into that system in the military tab the military mechanics uh, the strategic map this is kind of just telling you what buttons are new and what's out here. So you have your typical blockades. So that is blockades against you. So in this case, uh, for example, they're at West Point, Hamptons, they should be blockading this one, right? Yeah, here's Gosport, so it's 24. Here is Gosport up here, 24 blockades. So that'll be blockades against you. And then I believe if you have another symbol, it should be generally the same or a little variation of this to tell you uh, what you're blockading as the Union. Union invasions. Here's the Union invasion here. Tell you the strength. And pretty much that's within your territorial borders, essentially. So not things that have... Uh, that can 
future secede like Missouri or Kentucky as the Confederacy or West Virginia as the Union. Those ones don't actually change there for that until they actually change. So if we lost West Virginia in this campaign, then that would not be considered a Union invasion because it's their, now their territory. But if they were to enter West Virginia now, we would get a Union invasion tooltip. So it'll tell you what the strength is. You can click on it. It'll tell you where it is. This one in particular is this one, the Army of Northeastern Virginia that is right here. Then it shows us our invasions. And this kind of gives you an idea. Although we are fighting over Missouri, it is technically a Union-held territory, Union-held state uh, as per the borders. And so this is considered a Confederate invasion, and it will tell you what yours is. As you're the Union, it'll just flip-flop. Uh, green and red. Red is obviously going to be your the, the Confederate. And I think as the Union, I don't think it's flipped. It'll just be generally the same icons, but it'll kind of just tell you from there. British intervention, uh, it'll show up green as your the Confederacy for your percentage. And uh, if you're the Union, it should show up red, uh, mostly over on this side. So you kind of have a lot of the Confederate ones over here. And then your kind of dire alerts, like out of supply and stuff, will be on the right side. So kind of a, a change around of, of tool tips. Up here, strategy, military, finances, policies, production, goods, and trade. We're going to go through the strategy tab uh, at this point. All right, sorry about that, guys. So we're going to go through that after we finish the map. So... Compass, not really anything to worry about. You have your map information here. This is your command and control, so it'll show you your range rings, essentially, for your command and control. Uh, like these right here. You click that off, those rings will disappear. Get your movement arrows. Obviously, if you're moving a unit, they'll show up on the map like that. If you want those to disappear, uh, that's that. Your telegraph lines. Uh, you can kind of disable them. As you get the system up, it's nice to see. And I think I'm going to go more in depth on telegrams in the military section because it was the first time I really used telegrams in the Confederate section. And it was definitely a good thing to use when commanding everything over in Missouri. It kind of helped us push into Missouri a lot quicker because we were able to give commands faster around the map. So. That's your telegraph lines, your supply lines. So this should show your supply flow. Your supply is vastly different now. Uh, funny part is it's not showing up for me. It's hilarious. Sometimes this happens with tooltips. Yeah, let's see. Sometimes scrolling out will do it. Okay, so it's not. We need to let it run for a second. That's why. We'll let it run here. We can update. All right, there it goes. The supply tooltip. So it'll tell you here uh, green and yellow. So. We'll kind of go through this quickly. Green being that it's getting adequate supplies and yellow meaning it's not getting adequate supplies. I'll go more into this in our military section. There's a lot of stuff in that. That kind of tells you what's going on there. Same thing with these tool tips. We're building a military fort at Memphis in this campaign. So that gives you a little tool tip there. Uh, your automatic iron, uh, like automatic economic things that I don't know personally how do you affect them other than the policies. I'm not sure how uh, it kind of works because it's more of a background type deal. 
but you have those tool tips on the map as well so you'll have a lot of that stuff uh, telegraphs your towns larger towns these are the ones that have like uh, strategic points connected to them scrolling further you should be able to see here's a, this is a coal mine gold mine here uh, go around you'll see some more here is an ironworks there's plantation so you'll be able to see that those are a lot a lot easier to handle now because you have to uh, kind of go over them it's cool then of course your ports uh, military icons so that's if you don't want to see the NATO tooltips even though NATO doesn't exist these are considered NATO tooltips uh, NATO icons a lot of people are familiar with NATO icons today so that's why they're used for your like infantry and garrison and cavalry uh, your borders obviously shows you the border states map text that removes any of the text off the map battle monuments so you can turn these on and off if you're bothered by them let me find one over here um i believe there was one Somewhere over here. I'm not sure in this one if we've had a lot of combat. We've had a lot of combat over here. Take that off. Um, we actually don't have one over here either. That's kind of strange. Because we fought around here in this campaign. So essentially they're the uh, icons that will kind of tell you what battle occurred. There. You can turn them on and off. And then this is the map icons for the buildings, infrastructure, things like that when you go over. Your field book kind of give you all your stuff. If you don't want to listen to me and you feel like reading, well, all the stuff is in here. Kind of tells you more in the mechanics. Uh, quick overview is kind of like your map stuff. So you can do the quick overview and you go out to this map style. And you have all these other filters. So these are a little hard to see just because I have it in uh, my resolution for my monitor. But you have none. So that's what you're doing now. Nothing will show up. They have front lines, which will show you your current front lines. So these are how far your troops have advanced, how far the other side's advanced. This kind of will tell you where the lines have been drawn of control. What your intelligence is so as a confederacy we have a lot of intelligence through the northern part uh and we have some towards this area down here but uh kind of tells you where you have intelligence where you can see some of the units uh workforce so population centers where you can capture uh, a lot of the goods and flow and stuff like that uh for the south uh slavery so these will be ones that if you capture as the north and with some of the uh, policies you might get uh, some of the things from there and deal blow to more areas uh, kind of sort if you're the north and union and you capture this portion of tennessee or this portion of uh, virginia maryland and you hold it you can significantly impact uh, the production of the south trade so this is all the po points where trade kind of flows through into the nodes to Europe and also the ones here through the rivers for Canada and out through the nodes here and also the nodes down the south. These are just the port nodes, if I'm not mistaken, not actually the railroad nodes. So that is something to make sure you see. Uh, support. So this is state support. I don't think there's any tool tips with this, but this kind of gives you an idea of what the level of support is. I wish they did have a number attached to it, like in the middle, to tell you what percentage or what the number for that support is. But you kind of have to go through the military portion here. Go to like you're recruiting something and go here and you can see the support numbers. And this is support of all the states that are through here to give you a total average of support 
They'll even give you uh, numbers for states that aren't even in the Union. So obviously Rhode Island or that aren't in the Confederacy. But then as a unit, it'll give you states that aren't in the Union that seceded. So Maine, uh, Indiana is in here, Illinois, Georgia, uh, Michigan, stuff like that. So that's all the states or territories there. That gives you an idea of what your support is. I'm not sure if, as the South, you ha that overall support affects you up here. Because this national support is based on uh, total accumulative that you hold instead of the other person. So then in supply, where you have large amounts of supplies stored. In this one in particular, I see we have an army out here uh, building a lot of supply. One of our main armies is here. We're starting to build it up. In Mississippi, as we have this big army here, we're building the supply zone in Tennessee. Uh, so this kind of gives you an idea where you have throughputs very easily. Particularly if you notice, the one in, in Tennessee, you have a railroad that kind of goes around through it. You have two railroads feeding it. Uh, Corinth is kind of feeding this one here at uh, Memphis. I don't think this one has a railroad portion to it, but I think it's down more to the south. So you kind of get the idea where a lot of it is flowing through. And it's like this because we built most of our depots on the front. We didn't build them down here, so that's why you don't see a lot of supply down in the south. So that's your map filters. Let's go back to none here, actually. Tooltips right here. Just noticed. Support, there it is. Virginia, 95%. North Carolina, I'm looking right here. 90. South Carolina, 93. Georgia, 94. 88 for Tennessee. Alabama, 94. Florida, 95. Mississippi, 93. So you get the gist of it. There's your support uh, portion. Uh, what you also have here then is your army tab. So all of your armies, uh, this is all your field army. So I think before it had the, uh, the forts on here, those have been removed and these are the ones that are field armies only. Same thing here, this is your deployed navy. Show railroad tracks, this is new here. Allow you to see the railroads and the junctions. So this is a great add-on from the latest patch, the uh, 9113. So you can see that this railroad is here. It exists. This is one that is not constructed because you have the tooltip next to it. The white tooltip here, and it'll tell you it's in Atlanta. It goes from Jackson, or not Atlanta. It goes from it's in Alabama. It goes from Jackson to Selma. So it's this road here. It'll blink. Hey, this is the throughput that you'll have. And then these two, these three green portions. So what this means is you need to hold all three of these green portions to be able to build this railroad. That's great. It's these three stations. As you see here in Little Rock, uh, the one that goes from uh, Little Rock, Arkansas into Memphis, Tennessee. Again, here's all the junctions. And this one in particular, there is uh, there's six. They're all green, meaning you have them all, and you could build this. Uh, say in this one, though, in uh, Davenport, this one that goes to Omaha City through Council Bluffs, this one in Des Moines, all of these stations. These are not held, so they're all red. We can't actually build that. This one, the Cumberland Gap, we hold uh, three stations, but we don't hold the station up by Lexington, so we can't build that one. That gives you the idea there. 
And then the Southern Pacific one, there's some that you cannot build until you connect it. So the Southern Pacific and the Northeastern Union Pacific are the final ones in the stop where the game decides that that is the railroad to the West. So those two specifically are ones that you need all of the stations that connect to it before. So in the North, uh, the uh, Nebraska Union Pacific one, you need all the stations through Omaha City, Des Moines, uh, Iowa City through Davenport, all of the stations before that built, and then you can build the railroad to the west. The rest of them, kind of just to say, hey, these are already built. These are where the stops are, and here is who holds them. Remember, your side is always green, so it's not color-coded like red, uh, uh, confederate, and green union. It's red. It's, it's actually printed in a way to say it's green if you control it, it's red if you don't. So you get a lot of railroads. And the big one into Canada, obviously that one is, uh, well, can't take it because I don't think you can attack England as a union. So that kind of gives you all of those there. Obviously this hides it. You have your time, your map speeds, that sort of thing. Uh, and then we'll go through the strategy. And then the next video we'll go through uh, finances, policies, production, and goods. It'll be like the economic portion. Then the military one will go through military, a little bit of the policies and what's there, how production and finances kind of feeds into that. So I have a bug. This is, this is likely the fact from having a save before the 9113 patch. So that's why you see this change. Uh, to my knowledge, in everyone else's campaign, when they started a new one, in the 9113 patch from the start this did not occur so this is definitely from the fact that i just loaded a save that was from a prior patch so just disregard the fact that we have john v dubois and philip b standard the leads of the armies so we'll kind of break down this so here's your objectives be different for the union it's tailored towards your section for the confederacy you break union morale as the union, you have to break uh, uh, Confederate morale. For this, it's capture DC, so capture the capital, win the first battle, uh, union support below 60, same thing with Confederacy. Uh, this one is uh, tied though to, I believe, the election of November 1862, so this is a timed one for the Confederacy. I don't think uh, when you're the Union, there is a time one. Capture Union City. There's one that says capture a southern city. Uh, invade the north, and you have invade the south. Then here is the two that's kind of different. So K Kentucky and Missouri are Confederate uh, concentrated ones. For the Union, it is West Virginia and... Uh, I think it's just West Virginia is that one. So that's kind of like the specific ones there where you can get West Virginia to seed from uh, Virginia. And then these two win three consecutive land and naval battles. That's for both. And then, of course, here, this is Jefferson Davis. If you're a Confederacy, if you're the Union, it would be Lincoln. So... I'm not sure what happens if you're the union and union support goes below 60. If that is a piece, because I've always technically got uh, the break morale before the election actually happens. So I'm not sure uh, if that is a break. Uh, as we go down, here's national morale. So we're going to go through these tool tips. I'm going to read them for you. Represents the citizen's willingness to fight is influenced by policies and objectives is reduced when losing battles or towns are occupied. Capturing lost town retrieves the morale loss. Uh, if national morale drops too low, the campaign is lost. So what that means is the towns 
uh, that have the numbers to them are considered major towns. I think some of the other towns might give you an accumulative one, but the ones that really give you points, I'm not sure if this is eight, like eight points, or if it's like a level eight city, like whatever. We can see like the income uh, below, the income level. So that's something to be looking out for. I think this is actually uh, some of the morale points that you might get. So those are the major points that you want to get. They're on both sides. Nashville's down here, Decatur, Corinth. A lot of them are strategic ones. Uh, like Corinth is a strategic rail hub. So it encourages someone to grab that because it is one point. But it isn't something major like, say, Montgomery, Alabama, which is the capital, or uh, Macon... There's a gust or Atlanta is two. Macon's a good rail hub. So that's why it's up there. So is Augusta. Charleston is a big one. So both rail hub, C hub, and the fact that it's uh, kind of like the main war effort. Columbia is there. Charlotte, rail hub through. Uh, Wilmington, same thing. Trade, rally both uh, trade hub and the capital so you see certain areas same thing with petersburg really what feeds through uh, into richmond so you have different points for different reasons that sort of thing and then it kind of breaks it down so union total accumulative right now in this snapshot of the campaign is minus 15 so it'll break down each step what is it through battles well it's uh Negative 4.3 uh, through Militia Act policy. So some policies will actually bring down your national morale. But in their aspect, they're getting a buff from it uh, through invasion. So that's you invading uh, through the first, uh, through win first major battle objectives. They actually did not get that objective. Because uh, we won the main, first main battle. So since we won that first main battle, they get the debuff to that. And then any policies you can get before the campaign. So Old Dominion brings it by by five. Then their northern industrialization policy that the Union takes brings it down by five. Indian Wars brings it up by five. Uh, state support. So that's kind of like the holding up the morale through the state and then private wealth as well so some of the economic sliders with this can actually destroy your wealth uh, and your economy which can actually reflect in your national morale so that's important to know then uh, the confederate side it's minus six uh, almost minus seven points almost three two battle but through battle objectives one uh, plus two state support uh, pretty much even and through private wealth mainly because of the fact that we're kind of bleeding our economy at this point average state support so this is the average national support across the board by all the states morale of armies this is all the uh, the average of the entire army that won't actually tell you if one army is spy, uh, like having a death spiral. Loyal states kind of tells you what the loyal states are there. I'm not sure if there's any real point to this. Uh, it can consider contested, but I'm not sure how. Like you, you can't convert, say, Indiana to a loyal state, so or Illinois to a loyal state. So I'm not sure how this does much maybe in the future it goes by how much of a state you occupy maybe i don't know men fielded so this is all of the men being recruited so this is not the total men on the field so this is the same thing there this kind of gives you an idea is soldiers in the field so on the map not ones awaiting to come on uh, like that are marching through recruitment uh, the naval tonnage so 
Beside each has military experience. Uh, each battle, no matter what, if won or lost, adds military experience as the soldiers and commanders alike learn how to fight and train this new kind of war. So, with military experience, more entrenchments can be constructed, so more engineering points and new commanders have better initial experience values. One thing with this I'm noticing is, I'm going to mention this in the military section, is I think they are kind of messing around with this, but... A lot of commanders will have this, but never actually get better. The only thing I see get better is fame over time. But most of these are static, or they're going down, but they're not actually going down because they've always had one star. So it's very weird, but I think it's something they're uh, they're messing with. Remember, it is an early access game still. How many battles have been run at this point by each side in the campaign? And the total casualties from those battles. This is only battles, not attrition. Uh, European relations. Uh, the uh, Confederacy will be the only ones with relations, I think, that I've seen. Now, trade warfare. And we're going to get more into this. I never really mess with it all that much, but I'm going to try to explain it to uh, y'all as best as possible. So, shows the accumulative accumulated and estimated cost of the war on trade and infrastructure of each nation not taking into account secondary effects like high inflation or people or lower people's income these costs materialize mostly in lower, lower tax revenues and repair outlays so this for the union per se is getting hit through blockades and privateering so policy and military blockades through raids which would be if you were to raid into a state and i'll go more into that uh, in the military section but i haven't raided since probably eight or nine patches ago because there were some issues with it where if you raid into a state that you can turn over to your side especially as a confederacy or say as a union you go raiding through uh, West Virginia and then you turn West Virginia it doesn't reset its national morale towards you because you raided the state your low uh, you'll have lower support in that state so really when it comes to raiding you kind of only want to raid the areas that are away from your territory or that you don't hold uh, another thing I probably need to test is uh, how far the Rating radius is and then through repairs repairs uh they have a new infrastructure repair system in when you take cities or lose cities the other side has to repair the infrastructure to be able to use it that's there and then the confederate side we're getting blockaded in this campaign like no other so getting blockaded and privateering is a big one do raids they're not raring uh Rating and then through repairs because we have to repair a lot of stuff in this weapon industry so this factor represents the industrial power to provide or to produce and equip units with improved rifles and artillery guns the higher the value the more units can be equipped with modern weapons it is improved by increasing factory capacities so that is you influence the economic to get the production of those areas up to increase their production uh, arranging import treaties so that is through both the policies with diplomacy to get Europe to send you arms as well as the increase in finances to the uh, diplomacy tab that's one of them the other way to get the industry portion to develop more is obviously increased industry um, and by supporting domestic weapons industry via industrial industry policies. What it means by that is taking an industrialization policy, going down, which will unlock other arms, and then further increasing it with the slider in industry there. So kind of how you do that. And then the last one is who has the advantage. So... It's kind of it here it has all the records kind of tell you where uh, 
uh, events have happened, that sort of thing. So, anything else on the map? Um, Supply depots, we'll talk about that in the military section. The same thing with this, we'll talk about that in the military section as well. And the same thing with the new uh, supply symbols in here. Um, yeah, that's that's the biggest thing with the strategic portion of it. Pretty straightforward and easy for the strategic portion to understand uh, what's going on. It gets very nuanced when you start going into the tabs. And that's when it gets a little confusing how everything connects together. And uh, some of the more nuanced mechanics that they've added in the uh, 9113 patch uh, for the military and the supply system, things like that, to kind of slow down the game. Because I remember at one point, this game was a rush fest. Essentially, you got the biggest army, you didn't matter about who was supplying, and you just crashed on the other side, and you just hoped you could take the field on the tactical map. So, a lot slower. Uh, supply system caters a lot more to a union playthrough right now as they tweak it just because of the fact that the uh, The supplies are definitely something that can bog down a uh, campaign So that will be it for the map section and the next one I'll go to the uh, economy so finances uh, how policies kind of goes into that uh, production and goods and then the rest of the policies will be wrapped into the military mechanics one on the map so thank you all for joining me if you have any questions go ahead and leave them below in the comment section i will get to them uh, and i'll try to answer them as best as i can otherwise i will see you guys in the next one later